This right here is the best dropper post I have ever owned in my life and it had better be because it is $800. So some of you may be asking yourself why in the crap somebody would pay $800 for a seat post. First of all, it's a dropper post so you can adjust the height of it while you're sitting on the bike while you're riding. So you're gonna go into something janky, you're gonna hit a jump, you can drop the seat to get it out of your way. But you can get a dropper post for 200 bucks. This one is 800 because it's wireless. There's no cables going to. It keeps the cockpit nice and clean. Now of course one of the downsides is that it takes a battery. The battery lasts a really long time, but it sticks off the back of the seat and that kind of presents a problem sometimes. Let me show you. All right, so I'm gonna let the air out of my rear shock here. All right, let's drop the seat post. Like I'm gonna be hitting a big jump. You can see here, this battery is coming really, really close to my rear tire. In fact, if I hit hard enough, the tire rips it clean out of my $800 dropper post. I know you don't feel bad for me, but, um, but it's a problem I have. Now, as you can see, if I had a normal dropper post, the tire would just clear the seat. That's the way they engineer these bikes. They want you to be able to get the maximum travel and they don't care that one specific size of the bike with one specific $800 dropper post is not gonna be compatible with it. They can't change the entire geometry of the bike for that. In fact, this isn't the only bike that happens on. I've had it happen on a lot of other bikes. For some reason, they make the battery hang off the back when in my opinion, it should hang off the front or be inside of it or something. So I could use one of the many wired dropper posts that are available that don't have a battery sticking out the back. But instead, we're gonna do something a little bit different, but kind of the same. We're gonna hack this dropper post. So if we take the battery out of the dropper post, it does clear the tire. And so if we were to like relocate the battery, then we wouldn't have a problem, but that's eh, kind of hard to do. This is a pretty precise engineering right over here. There are these two little tiny contacts. You can see the battery has these little contacts on it. I, I don't know how I would relocate it, and so I've got an idea. So these batteries are 7.4 volts. So are these. In fact, so are a lot of lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries that I could just stash under the seat. Then if I could just run a wire into the post to power it, then I wouldn't need the battery hanging off the back and I could have my cake and eat it too. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try and mount a battery someplace else and somehow hook it up to that without totally butchering this dropper post that costs more than some bikes. So let's start by taking apart this battery. It looks like it's kind of plastic welded together. So let's say we were to use this battery right here. We could use this pigtail over here to plug it in. And so this little piece with the contacts that I took off the battery, we're gonna have to attach these wires to it and then I think we're done. All right, so I have my meter set to continuity. So when these two complete a circuit, you hear that annoying beeping sound, we're gonna hear that. So now I can start prodding stuff here and figure out which terminal goes to what. There it is. So now I know where we solder to on the inside to get to there. All right, we're gonna do a little test here to see if at least this part of it works. We're gonna plug the battery in. No smoke, nothing's exploding. That's a good sign. I'm just gonna hold it up to the dropper post on the contacts. <laughs> okay, so we've got the proof of concept. Now we've gotta build it into an enclosure that's gonna fit here and look somewhat presentable because this doesn't look presentable at all. So here's my idea. These batteries cost some ungodly amount and good old Amazon to the rescue. These batteries are like 10 bucks a piece and they have the little contacts on them. I take the Amazon battery, take the battery part out of it and file this case down to like there so it barely sticks out. Okay, let's see if we can get this to go together. <laughs> yeah, check that out. We got our little adapter here. So the adapter is gonna go in like this lock into place, and then we can run our wires up there and it barely sticks out. Okay, so next we need to kind of close this all up to protect it and to make it look somewhat presentable. So I'm gonna fill it 
with epoxy. Look at that. So there's all that clearance for your rear tire for the six of you to have this problem as well. So now we're gonna hook up our new adapter. But the question is, does it work? Sure does. Now I just have this little LiPo battery pack, basically double-sided taped underneath the saddle. Doesn't interfere with the saddle flexing. You can barely see it and I know it's not gonna come off. This is held on with this dual lock, which is really strong. This is as close to a perfect solution as possible, but I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, why don't you just turn the seat post around so that the battery is facing this way, install the saddle backwards, and then nose it forwards? And the answer is that that's been engineered out of the seat post. You can't do that. The clamp does not tilt enough for you to actually do that with the saddle. So this is the only solution that I know of that anybody has implemented. But now to make sure it really works, I gotta go clap this on a jump. Something just happened. So that time I hacked the jump, I cased it, and it ripped the battery out. It's right here on the ground. One of the terminals is no longer showing, so, that, so this thing's no longer functional. You can see the tire scrape the whole thing, not the little tab at the end, the adapter itself. There's no solution. So the only solution then is to hack the clamp. So all I have to do is remove this little bar, and then I think it'll be infinitely adjustable. We will lose the micro adjust function, and we'll be able to just angle it and tighten it. it is I just broke my Torx. Just can't believe how tight it's in there. It's like, do I commit, or do I look up the manual and do it properly? Let's commit. Herein lies one of my biggest personality flaws. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna do something really violent. We got her. This had better work. If this works, and the answer is hack that little bar out of there, then this is the perfect solution. So we have the seat post facing this way. Oh my God, something, I bet you it's not. Oh my God, why did I do this? SRAM is gonna have a bone to pick with me, but like, the whole reason I'm doing this is because I want to run my favorite dropper post on my bike. This might work. Holy crap. Okay, so get this. We can totally move the saddle as far forward as we want and tighten it down and it'll stay in place. But it's pushing up on the saddle. So like the top of this mechanism, there's a hump in it. And so it's actually pushing up on the saddle. How much is that gonna affect my comfort? probably a lot. This is actually supposed to go down. It could be, affect my ability to have additional kids. Well, the good news is I didn't r totally ruin my $800 dropper post. It's still gonna work fine. All I lost was the micro adjust feature and I saved a little weight because that little piece of metal in there is gone. So uh, thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time. It actually doesn't feel much different, but it probably feels very different when you hit a bump. Um, it probably feels very different when you've been pedaling for 20, 30 minutes. Maybe I'll try it. Guys, next time I lose my temper like that, will you just like say something? <laughs>